22 rue du 1er juin, 22 uh, 1er juin Street, at the showroom of Anissa Aida. Welcome. So we've been renovating this house for almost two years now. And I'm really lucky to have a mother and a boyfriend who are both architects. And they worked hand in hand in, desi in designing both the exterior and the interior design of uh, the showroom atelier space. Come with me. So my mother is um, uh, specializing in uh, renovating heritage. She worked on renovating the Medina of Tunis, which is the old town of Tunis. So she was really interested in preserving old things of the house into uh, and reusing them for the new construction. So the, the house is made of stones and she decided to reuse those stones and use them in the garden. Come on inside now. There are two entrances. The first one is here. And the second one, main one is here. You can see here an old sewing machine that was my friend's uh, grandmother's sewing machine. And here a painting by uh, Sonia Benslime, who is an emerging Tunisian designer. This here is the working space with uh, the big wooden uh, co-working table. You can see here Selma. She's currently working on maintaining the website. And then here is the showroom space. All of the um, woodwork, the shelves, the lamps that you can see in the showrooms have been designed by my boyfriend, who I was uh, telling you earlier about, uh, Hasid. He's uh, an architect and also a furniture designer, and he launched his brand, JK Lighting, uh, a few years ago. Here. Here will be the fitting rooms, still in progress. Um, a few rounds with the collections and I'll show you uh, in detail later. Here are um, paintings by uh, the Tunisian uh, painter, Kautar Bahri. And I really like her aesthetic. I think it goes really well with the mood of my designs. I'll show you a skirt, patchwork skirt that I made, made and it looks very similar to uh, in its aesthetic. I like how abstract and geometric it is, and I like the shades of blue that she uses. I'll show you other paintings by her. In this one, I like the perspective and also how abstract and also the, the fact that we can actually tell what it is. She told me it's a railroad station. This one here represents a library. This furniture is Bauhaus. It was given to me by a friend, a German friend who left 
uh, Tunisia last year, and uh, it's a very old uh, Bauhaus furniture. And here is my workspace with uh, my desk. Um, and I have a view on the, the garden and uh, this sculpture. Um, this vintage kimono, I got it from uh, New York in a vintage store, and it's made of silk, and it's really inspiring to me. I really like the hand embroidery. And the hat is a traditional hat from uh, the city of Jerba. It's an island in, in the south of Tunisia. These uh, wooden mannequins were a collaboration between me and uh, Hassan for, for an exhibition that we did uh, two years ago in an art gallery in Tunisia called Selma Feriani. And she, she has an art gallery in uh, the village of Sidi Boussaïd. Now let me show you um, the atelier downstairs, like the workspace where everything, the magic happens and where we'll have the prototyping space. We are still setting it up, but uh, here are all the rows of fabrics and we'll have a sewing machine and a professional iron and everything so that we'll be able to make uh, the prototypes in here as well. Now, let me show you uh, a space in the garden. We designed this, uh, this flying blue wall uh, inspired by the Majorelle Garden in Marrakech with uh, all the plants and we'll have more cactuses. And here we'll have a white wall with uh, all these bamboos. We'll add more bamboos. And actually this space is uh, dedicated to events and runway shows. Now let me show you the collection in detail. This is this summer's collection. This is the full moon dress in white linen and checked organza. So it's a short dress and it's very uh, nice for summer, very fresh. This here is the color uh, block dress. It's very geometrical. It's uh, in linen and cotton and it's, uh, it features uh, asymmetry, like in the back, the v-neck in the back and the v-neck here, and also has a kimono shoulder and on the other side, no shoulder at all. This one is the Lara Romper in lavender uh, linen and uh, organza. So the top is see-through and features a tailored collar and attaches with a belt. It has pockets and you can wear it. It has shorts. This one is a Vogesha shirt. with white stripes in organza. You can wear it with the architectural shorts. This is the asymmetrical Mandarin shirt, completely see-through in, uh, in uh, striped organza. And these are new pieces of, uh, it's a sneak peek uh, of the collection we are working on. So we made more shorts, longer versions. 
with like a Bermuda layered and in different colorways, also in turquoise. That you can wear with a newer version of a Rogesha shirt with a Mandarin colored. Rogesha shirts uh, come in different colorways in turquoise, in white, as you have seen, in navy blue, and in blue. We also have uh, the summer day in Tunis jumpsuit, as you may have already discovered on Supra's website. Uh, Supra's website features it in a black stretch denim, which is very nice and very comfortable and can be worn in the summer at all times, actually, uh, in the summer, winter, spring. Um, this is the Lara romper in a different color way. And I want to show you some new pieces uh, of the fall winter collection, some of which uh, Pauline will feature in her website soon. This is the solar eclipse dress. It is in stretch denim and features the same uh, textile manip uh, texture, uh, textile manipulation inspired by, um, by mosaic and, and tiles. So it's really time demanding to, to make this grid. We took strips of uh, black knit to make this grid effect. And we continued the same work, similar work uh, onto shirts like this one. This one is the olive grid shirt. It's a bit heavier because this is actually uh, like, uh, like canvas. It's a strong cotton. Um, so the, these, uh, these two are like the statement pieces for the full winter collection. And Sucre will have those um, starting later this summer. And this is the architectural knit top that features um, sleeves on the sleeves that are very airy and uh, a small turtleneck. And it's also color, color blocked with two different gray, um, gray knits. One is rib knit and the other one is uh, plain knits. And that's a favorite of Sucre customers. We have it in black, and then this summer we'll have it in another colorway. Exactly, this is the black one. And that's the wink knit top that uh, Supra will feature very soon in uh, its olive green version. Now, let me show you some menswear pieces. Anissa, which this is your, you launched menswear recently or tell a little bit about? Yeah, I launched menswear very recently. So uh, summer 2020 was my first collection last year. And uh, right now I'm, uh, more, uh, I worked on a winter collection, but, but you actually feature on your website. And I'm working on the next summer's collection. I'll show you a sneak peek. Uh, this is the Mandarin Dungri. Dungris are workwear jacket inspired by Chinese blue. And uh, they're worn all over Tunisia by everyone. It's become kind of a streetwear statement of um, Tunisian uh, sartorial traditions. So we, uh, I made this one uh, using patchworks um, of linen and cotton fabrics. This one is the Check Me Out shirt, but it's also available on Supra. And it's made of uh, checkered linen and uh, plain uh, linen fabrics with a detail of uh, a stripe of blue at the back yoke. 
And these are the Hassan patchwork shirts that exist in two colorways. Uh, this one is uh, on Supra's website. Now, let me show you the bags. So we have a few different bags. These are the square bags. And we also have a version with straps, um, like this one. And more recently, we've been working on uh, the wrong bags, like this one. The pattern is actually zero raised because we use this to fold and close the bag. And we also made it in a bigger format. More recently, this one. That's it. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for so much for that. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you kind of what, um, how did you know you wanted to be a fashion designer? Like what was that kind of fashion journey for you? Um, yeah, since I was a kid, I was really passionate about uh, sketching, doodling, and my mother has kept um, sketchbooks uh, in which I had my sketches and uh, um, and uh, it was very detailed sketches, actually. For example, I would uh, draw a bag and say 100% leather, or I would draw a dress and say, oh, it's 100% wool, and actually it's really soft, and uh, yeah, which is really funny. Uh, I grew up in Tunisia uh, up until I was uh, seven years old, then moved to Paris. Uh, in Paris, I started taking drawing classes, and then I followed a course at Le Louvre, uh, which was a pre-college, uh, three, three years course of uh, drawing and uh, art history. Uh, then uh, with my high school, I did an exchange program and I went to Tampa, Florida, where I spent, spent the whole year, my senior year. And then I knew I wanted to stay in the US uh, and I also knew I wanted to study fashion design. So I really wanted to be in New York and I applied to Parsons and I got accepted. And so I went to study at Parsons Fashion Design, which was really exciting. Uh, I interned for a few designers. I interned at Marc Jacobs Accessories. I also interned in Paris for ABC. Uh, and I did an exchange program, as you said in the intro, I went to Central St. Martins in London, uh, which was extremely creative and extremely interesting. Uh, what else? Uh, so I, yeah, then I came back to New York and uh, I started working for a collective of designers called Three As Four, uh, which was uh, very nice because they're extremely creative and uh, they work with 3D printing and laser cutting. It was pretty interesting. Then I worked for um, Outdoor Voices, uh, which is a sportswear company based in New York. And in 2016, I launched my own brand, Anissa Aida. Wonderful. Um, and you've talked in the past about the legacy of the textile industry in Tunisia. Um, tell us a little bit about, I'd love to learn a little bit more about like the workshops that you work with and what, what exactly that history is. Yeah, Tunisia has a long history of uh, hand weaving with looms, traditional looms especially in the Medina, the old town of Tunis, but also in Jerba and in the Sahel, which is uh, the central east uh, region of Tunisia. Uh, in the 60s, um, there was an industrialization era and the government started launching different factories for, uh, for industrial weaving, for uh, embellishment, for embroideries, uh, uh, for making denim. And actually in Tunisia, we produce a very good uh, denim, a very good quality, which is competitive to, uh, to international denims. It's even used by uh, some of the best brands like Levi's. 
And for example, in my work, I only use uh, Tunisian denim. Uh, in uh, 1972, there was a law that was called uh, La Loi 72. Uh, and this law really encouraged export. Uh, well, it made it easier for international companies to come and uh, have their production units in Tunisia uh, and uh, to benefit from, from offshore, like a, a duty-free tax. And so big companies like Kenzo, Alain Figaré, Isabelle Marin, they started the uh, production units in Tunisia. They benefited from um, cheaper labor and, uh, and, and duty-free. Uh, but in 2015, uh, there were, it was the end of uh, the multi-fiber agreements. The multi-fiber agreements are, um, are agreements dealing uh, with the textile industry. And uh, it made it easier for Tunisia to, uh, to sell a percentage of merchandise to European countries. So after those agreements were, were like ended, uh, things become, became way more competitive because there was a competition of, uh, with Asian countries like uh, China, but also with India and Bangladesh, Pakistan, who could pr produce much um, cheaper. Uh, because the lab uh, labor is uh, cheaper there. And also maybe they are a bit less cautious about uh, working conditions, the environment, pollution, than we are in Tunisia. So um, it was um, difficult for uh, big industrial groups in Tunisia. Uh, meanwhile, as Pauline said in the introduction, since the Arab Spring, there was a boom of creativity in Tunisia. Many more fashion designers, many uh, art galleries opening, uh, uh, a fashion week uh, that opened in Tunisia. So, um, and people got really interested in uh, everything that was handmade and preserving Tunisian traditions. So when I launched my brand, I really wanted to promote uh, craftsmanship and, and uh, ancestral knowledge. I'll show you uh, my mood board with uh, the, the artisans I work with. So here you can see Shantui, his hand, uh, hand weaving um, silk in the Medina of Tunis. And we can see someone working for him in his atelier. And uh, here is uh, Suhail Fitusi and his uh, hand making shoes. I'll show you uh, a pair of shoes that I've been um, working on. I've been working with him to produce these uh, shoes. Uh, it is inspired by the traditional balra or babouche, um, but it has platforms and it's made with cords. And uh, this is leather from um, a Tunisian producer. And this is also a uh, handwoven fabric. So here you can see his atelier with the, the molds and the, the leather skins. Uh, yeah. And then um, I wanted to ask you one of well, my favorite that's why I'm so pissed to move. Um, you, um, one of. I just saw. Uh, one of my favorite pieces are, is the sarwell pants, the linen sarwell pants. And I think it's a silhouette you've done in different colors. I wanted to get to like, have you explain a little bit the inspiration behind that and the history behind them. And I'll, um, I'll put a link in the chat so people can take a look if you wanted to to see sort of what I'm referencing here. Oh, great. So it's definitely one of my favorite pieces too. I'm actually wearing one today. And uh, I'll show you a few of the Sarwell pants that I have. Sarwell means uh, pants in Arabic, and uh, they usually feature a uh, drop crotch and an elasticized waistband. So this is a, a Sarwell that uh, is also featured on Supra. It's made of linen. 
and has a lining in the hand woven silk. But I have different, uh, other different samples. I have this one and this one. And more recently, I've been working on one uh, that is a re a reinterpretation. I have uh, reduced uh, the pleats and uh, made the, the approach not as, uh, as uh, drastic. I'll show you uh, traditional, like drawings of traditional sarwells, like this one. And I'm really inspired by uh, traditional garments. Like for example, in, in my mood board, you can see also the barnous. Barnous is a traditional long coat wearing by a man. And it features a hood that is very geometrical and gussets. Um, yeah, so recently for a competition, I designed this look. And uh, so she she's wearing, uh, the mannequin is wearing a uh, barnous but it's reinterpreted with a big hood. And she, the mannequin is also wearing um, a sarwell in uh, ancient fabric, ancient handwoven Tunisian fabric. And the tunic is inspired by the Kurta, Kurta shirt and features a b-neck and some small pleats. And, uh, and this uh, fabric uh, called Stacruda, it comes from it, uh, the Italian Seta Cruda, which means um, like a silk, but is uh, of uh, off white, off white silk. Thank you. Thank you.